Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our webinar today, using GDTF and MVR to generate online paperwork with Production Assist. My name is Claire Manley, and I'm the Marketing Specialist for GDTF and MVR. Before we get started today, I just have two quick housekeeping items. First, this webinar is recorded, and you can find this along with all other manufacturer webinars, some training content, and some other fun videos on the GDTF YouTube page. And lastly, if you have any questions throughout the uh, presentation, please enter them in the questions box located right in your control panel, and we'll save some time at the end to get through as many questions as possible. So without further ado, I just wanted to introduce our guest presenter for today, Moritz Staffel with Production Assist. Thank you, Claire, for your kind introduction. I'm Moritz Staffel and thrilled to walk you through the remarkable possibilities that GDTF and MVR give to both users and manufacturers in the entertainment industry. I think sometime down the road, we look back and ask ourselves, how could we ever do events without this mind-blowing tools for productivity? But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Moritz Staffel and I'm the CEO of the company Deersoft. Maybe some of you already heard of us. Deersoft was founded in 2015 and did from there on groundbreaking software development in the entertainment industry. Our most known software is Vectorworks Braceworks, the software that empowers users to calculate the rig and ensure the needed safety for events. Starting in 2018, we have also backed the development of GTF and MVR. Together with ML Lightning, Vectorworks, and Ruby, we have created the MVR specification and helped to write the Deansback 15800. Also, the second version of GDTF, Deansback 15800 2022, was heavily impacted by our specialists here at Deersoft. So, for now, let me say a big thank you to these companies for this opportunity. It feels good to be a part of such great development. But now, back to topic. The first thing that we want to learn is what makes GTF and MVR so amazing. After this, we look into Production Assist, our new tool for online-based paperwork that will make your life easier solving your paperwork problem. As we not only want to talk about how we plan to improve your paperwork, we will also show you how we do it with MVR and GTF. After we hopefully have blown your mind, we will answer your questions. So let's dive into the topic. The main problem that we had before GTF is that every software and every tool use their own definition of devices, which also differs between the object type. Hoist, trusses, and fixtures were always not exchangeable between different types of software. So all the work that you spend on improving and customizing the definition is pretty much lost when you move to the next tool to do the other part of the job. This applies for all involved people that had a hard time collecting the data. The only person who really has all the information is the manufacturer. But how could you create files for all the different software? It was really messy. But good news first, we have a solution for this. DeanSpec 15800, alas, the general device type format, solves this. So GTF and MVR forms a common language for all the people inside the project. With the latest version we just published last month, we not only have solved this problem for fixtures, but also for lasers, trusses, hoists, and inventory objects like safeties and other small parts. This way, manufacturers of all kinds will have the option to represent their products in a common format to be present on all the platforms with the same quality. Never be left out the tech writer just because your products are not there. And here is where we come in with Production Assist. Production Assist is a cloud service that hosts all your paperwork from different platforms in one place. So every time someone changes something on the project, all paperwork will update and the relevant users will be informed. We have a native plugin for Vectorworks that connects you to the PA cloud and currently developing the add-on for MA3. We also have a small paperwork app that lets you directly modify and create the needed paperwork. The Production Assist app is a tool that we use for this demo, but the native plugins pretty much work the same way. Production Assist allows you to create paperwork for inventory, truck planning, electrical planning, structural calculation, and network planning. So pretty much everything you require. 
In addition to this, you can use our app to generate labels, which you can print and attach to objects. Production Assist does work in real time, which means every time a user changes the paperwork, it delivers it automatically to the other users. You can use connected devices like phones or tablets to see the paperwork. All the reports that you generate with Production Assist also can be exported to a PDF, but they are marked with a QR code so that you always can get the latest version and ensure the document is outdated. You can generate labels with QR codes that will allow you not only to read the data that you have printed, but also to scan them with any device and get all the information that is available. You can use the super cool note feature and directly attach a virtual note to an object and share it with your colleagues. But long story short, let's dive right in. I have started in Vectorworks and created the stage. Now I import into the Production Assist app via drag and drop the file into the application. When there are symbols inside the MBR, it asks if it should replace the symbol using a Production Assist symbol by a GDTF. This MBR right now comes from a Vectorworks version, which does not support GDTF 1.2. So objects like trusses are just geometry, but Production Assist have you covered and lets them convert them to trusses. We disable the import by group because the grouping is not something that we want to take over from Vectorworks. When the MVR is loaded, the scene tree will be filled and you will see the objects in 3D. The scene tree displays the object relations. You can see that the four truss lines are already grouped. That is because they form a structure and all connected objects will be automatically placed in the group. The other pictures need to be grouped manually, but this is a short process. We'll use the menu command group by class to bring the other stuff into the right order. You see, with a small effort, your scene is way more organized and easier to handle. Every part of the scene is grouped in its own individual assembly group. The grouping of object is an essential process for us as you normally create the paperwork based on the assembly groups that you have in your scene. Usually every object that will be assembled together is also grouped together as you need the information on the object also at the same time. The assembly group concept is close to the position in Vectorworks, but supports nesting. We will group the trick again in another assembly group. We need this for later. So let's create an assembly sheet for one of those truss lines. Just right click the assembly group T1 and click on the menu command, create assembly sheet. The dialog allows you to select a name for this and chooses a template to start with. Currently, we will choose Fixture DMX Overview. This template just lists you the DMX mode and the address with the fixture ID. The new worksheet can be viewed in the uh, dialog worksheets. Changing the table is straightforward. You can reorder the columns by dragging them. When you want to sort, just click on the header. Add new fields like the position on structure is easy. Just search for them and check their checkbox. Okay, that was simple paperwork. Now let's move on to something fancier. We will play explore how we can use the production assist to generate patch list. We will start by adding plug boxes to the trust line. To save some time, we'll use the insert object extractor function to just insert plug boxes where we need them. We also have a fancy patch tool, but you can learn about this one in one of our many tutorials easily found on our web patch. Right click on the topmost structure with the truss. We are lazy and don't want to spend a lot of time on this, so let's do this all at once. The dialog look lists all the structure that are children of the assembly group. I think by now you get the idea what possibilities the nested assembly structures has to offer to you. So right now I want to insert four block boxes for each truss line. Click OK and there you go. Now in every assembly group there is a plug box inserted. You can see the red symbol next to the name of it, indicating that the device has no connections at all. 
In order to proceed, we need to number the block boxes with useful object IDs. Production Assist has a nice feature that just automatically patches devices together with one menu command. Just select the object that you want to connect and run the menu command power patch selected objects. You need to run this four times, as this always patches the object together that are selected. We want only one object in one trust line to be connected. So let's look what we have done. Open the worksheet window. We'd like to create a new assembly sheet based on the one that we already have. So click on the duplicate button. We use the preset fixture power patch and see how they are connecting. Repatching is easy. Just type in the number of the connection that you want to use in the command line and it repatches it. You can see how this looks like on the distributor when we duplicate the assembly sheet one more time and select the preset distributor power patch. You see that the fixture that we repatched is now two times on the same output. Okay, but we promised you online paperwork, so let's do it. The magic command is commit. When running this, it lets you select a project name. This project name becomes part of the UL where the paperwork can be connected with. So let's use a fancy name for this, like GTF for the win. It starts then comparing the current scene with the hosted scene. When finished, it shows you all the changes between the cloud and your local version. Press OK if you want to commit. The project now is an online project, so all your collaborators can access this project. Let's see how this looks. You see, it's pretty much like in the app. All the worksheets are there in the state where you left Yen. You can change them and modify so that they look like what you need them right now. On the right, you're having the 3D renderer, which uh, gives you an overview about the current worksheet. But now we will look into creating labels as promised. As this now is an online project, you can use a QR code to access more information that has been printed on the label. When you update the data, the label have you covered as we keep track of the changes. To create a label, just run the create print label PDF dialog. It will start with a default label. This is part of the content from Production Assist. The preview currently is not the nicest, but when clicking on one of the labels, this one will not be printed. Good for the planet and saves you data. The share link is something special. Normally only people that are members of the project can access the data behind the QR code. When you enable a public share link, everybody with a smartphone is able to read them. Pretty cool. Also, no worries, you can disable the public share link after creating them. It lets me now select the object that I want to create labels for. Right now I want this for all objects, but you can also use the assembly groups here. That's all you need to set up, just click on the OK button. Now you can use your camera to scan the QR code. You don't need our production assist app on your mobile device, any browser will do. But for now I will use our iPad app to show you how this looks. The iPad app is there so that you can edit and modify the paperwork on stage, while the iPhone app is more focused on just displaying. You can also leave a note for your colleague that he can clean the fixture sometime. Pretty fancy, isn't it? If you want to change something on site, you just modify the object on the iPad and commit again. You see, when you commit to the cloud, it only shows you the change data, in this case, just the fixture ID. All the paperwork that you have created so far will automatically update for all the users. Also one thing that happens quite often on stage is that you need more dimension between the object. Production Assist has a fancy way to create them. Just run the menu command create dimension and all fixtures, hoists and structures will get their dimension set. Well, that went well. Doing demos with a new software is always a challenging process. I think you got an idea on how powerful GDTF and MVR are with production assist and how well they work together. As we are the new kids on the block, we still need to win your trust. Everybody attending the webinar will receive a voucher that can be used for three months of production assist pro teams for free. Try production assist with all unlimited features like structural calculation, electrical planning, and advanced online paperwork and pay nothing for it. Last but not least, let me thank you all for your attention.
We here at Deersoft are thrilled to make your life easier in the entertainment industry. I think with our work on Bracework, we significantly improve workplay and safety in the industry. With Production Assist, we wish to have a similar impact. Thank you.